Everything Jalen ever asked for, I gave to him. Jalen has never paid for anything, ever. There's a lot that I put up with in just two years of being with him. It started off rocky and then it got worse. I mean, he was putting his hands on me and we weren't even together anymore. What about your other kids? Were they around? Yeah, they will. I'm pretty sure they heard the domestic violence. I'm pretty sure they heard all of the arguments. But when I come out of that room, mommy knows how to wipe her tears and put a smile on her face. It got to the point where enough was enough. To say that I was a groomer knowing damn well that I held you down. I don't think that grooming is very funny at all. I was actually groomed. I was with someone who's 30 years older than me. Here I was sitting on all this money and I had nothing. Would you not ever done Housewives? Yeah, I would have never done Housewives to begin with. Um, they, they ruined my life. And do you feel any way towards Portia at all? <laughs> uh, mm. show podcast available everywhere you get show podcast please continue to like subscribe and share our youtube page at ball alert tv i go by the name of ferrari simmons i go by the name you know bt oct with that fallon in the building we got snap how are you doing yeah. ma'am i'm good i'm good how are you what brings us to uh, what brings you to the uh metaverse the baller uh, alert universe Oh, just another day in the media. BT called me and <laughs> yeah. I and said, guess what, guys? I got someone that I want to come on the show. I said, yeah, because yeah, I said, you know? you've been quiet. I'm like, when when was the last interview that you've done? I feel like, you know, um, you're somebody I consider a friend. And, you know, I feel like you just been a, getting attacked so much in the media. And it's like you just been quiet. So I'm like, what is going on? Well, first, for those who don't know about who Fallon is, can you give us a little rundown of who you are? Well, I started out on the real housewives of atlanta and then it kind of just blew up from mm -hmm. there um my ex-husband left me married portia who is my castmate um since then i ended up getting in a relationship with my then best friend um and we were just recently on mtv for couples retreat how did you get the opportunity to be on basketball i mean on um Housewives. 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 You know what? They actually approached me a few times and I said no. Okay. Um, I never really wanted to do reality TV. It's not my thing. Um, but the opportunity just kept presenting itself. So I said, you know, why not? What did you do before then? You were just a housewife in real life? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I know a lot of people were so saying online uh, that were you and Portia friends for real? Like, was that really your friend? Um, we were cool. So we met through the show. Okay. Um, and I mean, we would hang out after rapping. We would hang out, you know, on our own time, private time. She'd mm -hmm. be at my house. So okay. it wasn't a thing where we house. were like besties and braiding each other's hair. But yeah, she was in my house. She was at your house around your ex-husband. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> before you met him, where were you? Uh, what were you? What was your profession? Um, I was actually a clinical manager, so I managed a clinic in LA for like five years. Oh, oh did wow. you meet him there? No, no oh. it was a blind date. I thought he was a chef when I met him. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea because we went to restaurants and people would just come out and they're like, "You want some free food?" And I'm like, "Who is this guy?" <laughs> you know, I had no idea. This was, was in LA. No, this was in Miami. So you got flued out. And, th and then he put the charm on you and then you guys got together or? We had lunch. We had a dinner once and then the next day we got together to do lunch. Okay. And when we had that first lunch, we just couldn't stop talking. We talked for hours. And wow. And so when was the man. time that he told you to quit your job? <laughs> 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 when he... Uh, told me to move back to Atlanta because I'm originally from Atlanta. Oh, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. yes. what, what part, what, are you sure Atlanta or is it out, the outskirts of Atlanta? You know what? It's North, <laughs> it's Gwinnett. Okay, okay. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Where he goes I went to South Gwinnett. Yeah. Okay. Now side. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he moved, He had you move to Atlanta and then you just were together. Yeah. I, I really wanted to know what was going through your mind 
when you saw Portia dating your ex-husband? Oh, um... Did you find out online? How did you find out? I found out at the same time all of you guys did. On TV? On on social media. Social when they media? posted the picture. I think it was Dennis who posted the picture congratulating yeah. her on her next chapter. That's when I found out. Same as everyone else. No, so how are how you feeling? I mean, it's not necessarily about how I was feeling, but what I was thinking was, okay. how long was this going on for y'all to be engaged? Mm. You know, has he ever cheated on you before? Oh God, yeah. Mm. I was with him for five years and there was times where, you know, he was sleeping with his assistant and I forgave him. And then a couple other women, you know, there was speculation that came forth. I forgave him, you know, as women usually do. And so I can't say that I didn't ever get my lick back. I did. I wasn't okay. the most innocent. <laughs> you got your lick back? How so did you, you get your so lick you, back? You cheated back. That was before we got married. Um, that actually had a lot to do with how I met you. Oh, at yeah. that time. Oh, oh yeah. you remember? I, I was, Man, I was been, in the vicinity, actually. Yeah. Man, that, tell, that shows me like that guy named for a long oh, time. Never mind. What, what long happened? Time. What, what was this meeting? Um... BT, you want to tell a story? No. <laughs> I mean, we, we I know the young man. I know well, him. We met because we were all at the hookah lounge yep. with a mutual friend. Yep. And um, I had one of my friends with me and they kind of like just kicked it off. Yep. And that was your roommate. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, at the time that was my roommate. That's how long ago what that was. What was his name? Oh, I forgot his name. I don't know. It's a <laughs> famous yeah. city in England. Oh. Really? <laughs> oh, is yeah. it? What is it? Might be a street or something. I think it's London. Uh, oh, London. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's right. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay, carry on. What <laughs> happened? Um, so you met a guy named London? Yeah. And then we started dating. I wasn't trying to hide it. I was I was really young. I was trying Yeah, you was out. Y'all was outside. I was, at that point I was fed mm. up. I was like, "Well, if you don't care because at that point Simon had told me to my face cuz I told him, "All right, it's been a couple, it's been a year, it was about a year and a half that he had been sleeping around with his assistant. And so it got to a point where I was just tired. Then and he told, he told you to me face? to my face that I will never have any say so over his personnel or anything. So, and who he hires and fires. So mm. at that point I was like, all right, let's do it then. <laughs> Cause you forgot, <laughs> you done <laughs> forgot. And this so, is before you guys were married? This is before we got married. So you still got married? Oh yeah. Why? Cause he did his dirt and I did mine. And at okay. the end of the day, that was our business. And okay. we took a nine month break, which is the round of time where we were really, you yeah. know, Cause y'all had, y'all had me and some stuff and I, I, I had no idea what was, what was going on. Yeah. We were seriously dating <laughs> at that time, but I was single and, um, you were seriously dating London. London, okay. yeah, at that time. But I was single. We we dated for maybe four or five months. And then after that, um, we broke up. And Simon and I started secretly dating. Okay. And um, then three months later, we got married. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, so you guys are married. And now, when does the marriage fall apart? Mm. I don't really know. I it literally one day I was the happiest girl in the world and the next morning he was gone. Like he just mentally was checked out. I think it was it was around the time where I started realizing I wasn't that little girl anymore that I was growing up into a woman and I wanted more for myself. I didn't want to be a stay-at-home mom. I didn't want to be a trophy. I wanted more. And when he started being vocal about no, you're not going to have more. You know, you're going to be at home. If you do try to have more, he told me that if I went and got a job or anything that he was going to cut me off, like completely. Um, that I wouldn't be able to go on vacation with him and the children, like things like that. So I was never allowed to have anything for myself. So here I was sitting on all this money and I had nothing. No mm -hmm. kids with him, right? No. Oh, he didn't God. want, he didn't want any. No, he guys? did. He did. Um, you didn't want any kids with him? Um, No. At one point, him and I were like up and down. We wanted one and then we didn't. And then he did and then I didn't. So it was like. Okay. So when did you and Jalen became friends? When did Jalen come in the picture? Jalen came into the picture. Jalen was his assistant. 
No, no a lot assistant? of people say that. No, he was me, my assistant. Me. So Jalen was your assistant. He was my friend first. Okay. Um, in 20, 20, like end of 2019, 2020. Um, no, 2019, yeah. So he was my friend first. And we used to just always bump into each other, you know, being out in Atlanta and everything like mm -hmm. that. We kind of just. Because I'm wondering, what was he assisting? Um, well, the children, well, I had to take care of my three kids and okay. Simon's two kids. And then okay. his younger daughter, whenever she was, you know, in and out of town. So I needed help with That's that, running the household. We had a really mm -hmm. big house. It was, it was a lot to keep up lot. with. Yeah. Um, so just help with that. Um, yeah. So we just, Jalen and I were just cool. And then COVID hit and he lost his job. And so then that's when I was like, well, while who, I'm sitting who lost on money, who lost job? Jalen, oh, Jalen okay. lost his job. And so I was like, well, while I'm sitting on money, come and work for me. Mm -hmm. He said no, like initially, but then I was like, okay, no, let's go ahead and, you know, get you working and doing something. You're around me all the time anyway. Um, after a while, um, I could note, I noticed that Simon started putting me off on Jalen. Like he would like say, oh, take her out. Go, you know, keep her busy. Go do this, go do that. Now, mind y'all, I was not allowed to go out by myself with friends or anything. I was not allowed to have girls nights. I wasn't allowed to do any of that without Simon. You never see me without Simon. Like right, I was right. always with right. Simon. Um, Cause I wasn't allowed. And so then Jalen came into the picture and it was just like, here, take her. Yeah, go. You guys want to go shopping or you guys want to go, you know, do this or do that. Um, yeah, so then, yeah, I kind of felt like I was just pawned off. Damn. Yeah. Did you feel like more of Simon's possession than a wife? Well, I had never been like a real wife prior to that. So I wouldn't even know what that felt like but now understanding and um having the wisdom that i have about it now hell yeah i was definitely his little trophy I, I was that thing that you know he bought me a new little toy and to keep me quiet and do as i say you know not as i do so how did y'all start catching feelings for each other me and Jalen. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was going through a divorce. <laughs> you know, I was vulnerable <laughs> as shit. <laughs> I was vulnerable. I mean, I'm not. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I'm not gonna lie. Um, this is after Portia. No, I didn't even know about Portia. I knew that Simon was going out of the country to see another woman. But prior to Portia, there was another woman that came out in the media saying that she was dating Simon. The, the red Ferrari girl? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who I bumped into the other night. Oh, my God. That was a whole story. Wait, um, what happened with that? She was like, oh, my God, yeah. I slept with your husband. Oh, shit. <laughs> she was like, can we just, it's water under the bridge. Can we be cool? I'm like, girl, I don't even he care. Did, he denied that. Mind. He denied it. Yeah. Oh, and social there's media. There's everywhere. Yeah, there's a whole picture. I just remember her in that, in that red Ferrari. Yes, and I he, had just, I he had just purchased that Ferrari. I hadn't even sat in it yet before that came out. So I was like, what the hell? What's going on? So then um, that was the whole thing. Mind y'all, while we're going through all of this, we're still in therapy to try to work on our marriage. And so he was out of the country a lot with some other woman. I didn't know who it was. Um, and yeah, I had his kids and my kids back home. And then as it pertains to me and Jalen, at some point in time, Simon and I had the conversation, like, we're not going to make this work. This is done. And so. But yeah. Simon was saying that Jalen was pulling up, sneaking in the house and all this stuff while y'all was together. But you saying that, uh, you and Simon were already going through a divorce. Oh yeah, for sure. We were going through like in and out, in and out through our divorce. But while we were going in and out of it, he was still not home. <laughs> he was still gone. And I was begging him to come home, crying myself to sleep for weeks, you know? And at some point in time I said, you know what? I don't have to put up with this. Like I can make the money myself. I know that I'm better than this. I should not have to stay here for money. I shouldn't have to stay here for love because this isn't love. I don't feel loved. And so, yeah, at some point in time, I just stopped caring. Do you come from money? No, um, I started a petroleum, a petroleum transportation company. Um, I was in logistics when I was with him. 
he was selling oil, I was transporting it. That was the only thing he allowed me to do because he was still in control of it. So even though it was in my name and everything, I was doing all the work, he was my only customer. I was not allowed to deal with anything else outside of him. Is that still active or? Yeah, he took it. Oh. oh. So what did he leave you with? Uh, my prenup, I signed a prenup. Okay. Oh. So what does that mean? You came in with what you, you left with what you came in with? No, I left with a lot more. Um, we had two houses together. I received, well, he sold them. So I received from that and then my separation check. So I was still fine. Um, and I had, I had a really good allowance that I was sitting on. So mm -hmm. I was fine. So you were saving your money. Oh yeah. So he would give you an allowance? Yeah, I had a monthly allowance. Do you mind if, do you, if we ask what that consisted of, or is that ten thousand? Ten thousand a month. Mm -hmm. That's wow. a that's a good allowance. Man. I would have stayed too. <laughs> <laughs> I would have stayed too. <laughs> but he wasn't. But I mean, he I tried. Was. I tried. <laughs> but a lot no. came with that, though. A lot came with that allowance. Like you weren't allowed. Yeah, to. I wasn't about to sell my soul. Right. Yeah. He wasn't like where. physically abusive to you or anything. No, it was just really. He was thirty years older than me. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to imagine what that must have been like, you know, the control aspect of it all. Um, he said, jump. I said, how high? Mm. You know, it wasn't even all about the money. I truly was madly in love with Simon. I know people look at him like he's the beast and I'm the beauty, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> they do. They say it all the time. But no, I didn't care about any of that. I was madly in love. Um, there's nothing that I wouldn't have done for him. But at some point, like I said, I started to grow up. Do you miss him sometimes? Uh, I miss the money. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I was gonna say you probably miss those trips, huh? So are you- are Not you, really uh, the trips, no. I just miss not having to worry about building my own because mm -hmm. sometimes we have our lazy days. I don't That's always nice. want to get up and grind, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I have my days, especially having children and being a mother, I have my days where sometimes I want to stay in the bed. Um, and I used to be able to do that. Now I can't. Now I have to depend on myself. And mm -hmm. um, I actually love it here. I do. But I'd be lying if I said I didn't miss them days sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Did Jayla not uh, provide for you in the way that you want? Ooh, oh, my God. Let me set this record straight because this has been all over the media. And I, it's crazy because I wasn't really ever going to do this because the difference between Simon and Jalen is that Jalen and I have a daughter together. Right. And I always, from day one, I always wanted to save Jalen's image. I always wanted to build him up. I wanted him to feel like a man, you know, because that's what he yearned for the most. Um, but I have to be honest because he kind of, he did this to himself, you know, he opened up that bag and I would have preferred to just keep it quiet. Um, but now I have to defend myself. Um, Jalen has never paid for anything ever. Mm. He, I paid for every single thing. I mean, even on couples retreat, if you go back and watch when he was in our therapy session and he was saying, you know, like, I'm so frustrated. I have to pay for this and that and take care of the kids. I was trying my hardest not to laugh <laughs> because I'm sitting here like, huh? You do what? Does he take what care of his daughter? Oh, hell yeah, he does. He's okay. a great daddy. Cool. Great daddy. But as far as like paying the bills no. and I saw you, you bought him a truck at one point. Yeah, You two. bought him a truck, two, two. trucks? What mm -hmm. happened to the truck? I took it back. But listen, <laughs> <laughs> I took it back because there was cheating. I mean, there was abuse. There was mm. a lot of, there was domestic violence. Yep. Really? Oh. He was, yeah. He, domestic violence. There was a lot that I put up with in just two years of being with him. Um, it got to a point where I mean, he was putting his hands on me and we weren't even together anymore. Mm. You know, he, he just got mad one day because he found out I was dating. We were still living together because we were trying to figure out, you know, how to separate everything. Right. We weren't sleeping in the same bed for months. And um, when he found out that I finally was like moving on and, you know, taking those steps towards like seeing other people, I'll never forget it. He came home, it was four in the morning. He came busting in the door and he just, he choked me out mm. and 
I had to calm him down because then after that he couldn't forgive himself because he said he would never hit me again. And so it was to the point, like, I know in his interview he said that I just up and left with a man and, you know, now my kids are calling another man dad. And it's like, no, I had to call that man because I don't have family, you know, that could be there for me. And I had to call that man to come protect me and my kids and get us out of there safely. You know, I had to call the police. It was, it was, it was really dark. It got really dark. It got really bad. Um, and I, all I kept thinking was, I don't deserve this, and my daughter doesn't deserve to grow up seeing a man put their hands on her because Agreed. that's exactly what she's going to grow up thinking that is okay. Right. Um, the only reason why I put up with it is because I watched my mom go through the same thing. So I'm like, oh well, you know, here I am making excuses. He's young. You know, he's just, he's upset today. You know, he's going through a lot. The media, they're so mean to him. Like, let me just, no, I could do it. I could do it. I could save him. I could save him. To the point where it got, it was at my own detriment. And I had to learn that I can't keep saving people's image. Mm. You know, meanwhile, everybody's out here thinking I'm, Controlling or manipulative or um, a groomer. <laughs> yeah, how did that come from? Hilarious. The grooming comment. In his interview that he recently did, he called. He said that I was a groomer, that I groomed him to be with me. But a groomer is someone who's much older. I'm nine years older, but I get it. Cool, I'm older, but you know, there's something to groom you for. There was nothing to groom you for. I did everything, and damn. I mean, yeah. Damn. <sighs> How did it make you feel after that comment? Because I saw that all over the media. Yeah. I and mean, I, that's and why I saw I put, your t-shirt. Yeah, that's why, I, <laughs> that's why I made the t-shirt because I'm like, oh, okay, well, while we're out here lying, you know, let me just go ahead and make some type of clapback because I don't think that grooming is very funny at all. I was actually groomed. I was with someone who was 30 years older than me, you know, and would use my youth and everything like that and manipulate me in order to stay with them, you know, so... To say that I was a groomer knowing damn well that I held you down. Mm. I paid for everything. I allowed the media and everyone, my own family, to believe that you were a real man and that you were out here taking care of business in the household when in all actuality, you weren't doing anything. You know, I cooked, I cleaned. I, I, not that he didn't cook ever, but most of the time, he would play his game for 16 hours a day because he fell into depression and would not be there for me and the children. I was going through postpartum by myself, you know, so, and he was going out, found out that he was cheating on me because he came home at 8 a.m., you know, and went through his phone and lo and behold, he's sharing his location with a whole woman and her sharing it back. You know, it's just like, I could go on and on, but it got to the point where enough was enough. And we had only been together for two years, you know. Like incomplete before y'all got. Yeah, I mean, right, we got pregnant right when we started dating, like. Yeah, I was gonna ask, you know, why would you have a child with him knowing that, you know, he doesn't even take care of- He was not this person when we were friends. And that's the one thing that I do miss the most, um, or I did, was that I really saw him as a different person because when we were friends, oh my God. We had the best experiences. We had the funniest laughs. He was my dog. And no matter what I went through, all the people who left me, all my best friends, even family members who left me in the dust after Simon and I got divorced, Jalen was still there. He was the only one there. Everybody left. Nobody believed in my vision of me being able to do this for myself. You know, everybody kept calling me stupid because, or I fumbled the bag or, you know, I was dumb for choosing myself. Um, and him. And who? And Jalen. Were they mad that you chose Jalen, like, to be with and start a life with? You know what? I think all of the city of Atlanta is still mad that I chose Jalen. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I, I did raise my eyebrow at you when you... Yeah. I was like, wait. I mean, because you him. ended up proving them right, kind of, when you, you know, saying that you had to really take take control over everything because he wasn't you know, manning up to anything. Right. And just, you know, to give him that excuse to make him feel a certain way. Right. Do you feel like that came from your lack of control over your life? You know, 
when you were married to Simon in your previous life, did you feel like just being with him in a, in um you know just having somebody there that you can kind of boss up on? No, I never bossed up on Jalen. He wouldn't allow me to. I mean, he was very abusive. No, it was not like that at all. Um, with him, it felt like the reason why I splurged on him, if you will, the way I did was because it felt good to feel appreciated. I wasn't appreciated in my previous marriage. And so he was literally, he was giving me everything that I actually wanted in my marriage. Um, and then it just kind of, it went from there. And what year did he start abusing you? Before your child or after? He became physical while I was still pregnant with Emma. Mm. Yeah. And then after I dropped, I mean, I stayed in my room with Emma for a few months. By the time she was five or six months, that's when I started, you know, stepping outside and just saying, you know what, I don't care about what you say. I'm gonna have a couple girls nights or whatever. And he was cool with it until he wasn't. You know, until I was coming home at two thirty, three in the morning. Now he's like, oh, la, la. but while I was pregnant, he called me controlling. I will say this because in his interview, he called me controlling. He called me controlling to my face while we were together as well. But his controlling was, he was coming home at six, seven in the morning, spending all of my money on bottles and sections every single night while I was pregnant. And if I spoke up and said, that's inappropriate, you can't be spending all this money, one, two, I'm pregnant with our baby at home. You cannot go out every single night and just party it up at six, seven in the morning. That's not what you signed up for. I did not put a gun to your head to make you be with me or to lay with me. So if that's what you wanted, that's what you chose, you need to be here, you need to be present. I don't mind every here and there, but you do it every single night. And then he would call me controlling and say, I'm trying to take his youth from him and things like that. And it's like, well, you're taking the fact that I actually wanted a relationship, a real relationship with a real man away from me. Baller alert! Hey y'all, it's Fallon Pina, and you are now tuned in to the Baller Alert Show. When I seen a clip uh, on the internet where he was like, don't fall in love with your best friend and you know, um, you know, whatever, whatever he, he was saying. How did, how did you feel about that? Cause that clip was like very like sentimental. Yeah. Um, a lot of things I think he says is bullshit. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, yeah. You can say oh, okay. whatever you want. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I do. I do feel like it's bullshit, but at the same time, there's times like Jalen is a really good liar. Like he's really good to Damn. me. He is. I, I'll give it to him. Like behind <laughs> closed doors, y'all. Like he still talks to me. Like we're friends. He's still cool with me. And then he'll text the person that I'm dating right now, he'll text him and try to break up our relationship by using the things that I've told him, you know, in confidence, not about my relationship, but just, right. it could be something light, like, oh my gosh, I went to the grocery store today and I had a tummy ache and oh my gosh, I have this. He was like, did you know she had a tummy ache when she was at the grocery store? And it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Where does he have a, a relationship with your, with your new guy? I mean, they met because at the end of the day, I do have him around my children. Anyone I date, I'm, I'm definitely the type of mom where I'm going to have them around my children. I'm not, I'm not the type of mom to like date somebody for two, three years and then be like, oh, hey, now you can meet my kids. Mm -hmm. And y'all don't even like each other now. Now mm -hmm. I got to start all over. You know, I'm not going to do that. So, of course, you know, the person that I'm seeing, he um, is around my children. So I made sure that Jalen met him. And when I say they talked for hours and Jalen texted me the next day and was like, he's such a great guy. I see. He doesn't like want to whip Jalen ass. Yeah. Oh, okay. Bad. And who is he? After <laughs> real bad. Who, who, you. who is this guy you're dating now? I don't want to say. Is he? And uh, he lives in Atlanta. He's an actor. He's an actor. Does he got money? He's an actor. Yeah, he's he's he does pretty well for himself. Okay. Um, I mean, because last time you said that, no. Nah. You, know, you really like, you really like this guy? Oh, snap! <laughs> you right. You right. You really like him? I do. Okay. I like him. Um, but he a provider. He's an actor and he's a boxer. Okay. Yeah, actor yes. and a boxer. Mm -hmm. Is this a classic example of? Because when I saw you in Jalen's Instagram, and I was like, "Oh, you guys look very happy." Mm -hmm. Is this a classic? You know, 
well, it looks all right on, it looks great on Instagram, and but behind the scenes, because everything that you're saying, I'm over here like, damn. Yeah. Because the pictures, uh, what I was seeing with you guys together seems like everything was great. Yeah, I mean, every relationship, they have their bad days and good days. I mean, our relationship was the same, even though my bad days were worse days than most. Yeah. Um, we still had our good days. We still had our good times. Um, and whenever those times were happening, of course, I always, you know, made sure I okay. caught a picture and posted it. But no, it got to a point where it started off rocky and then it got worse and it got mm. worse and it got worse. And then we did couples retreat and I really had hope, you know, that it was gonna get better. And then it just, it got worse and it got worse. Oh yeah, and that was another thing that he said um, that I wanted to address, that he was taking care of my sisters. He never took care of my sisters. I took care of my sisters. I paid for every single thing. And um, he also was the one who wanted my sisters to move in with us. I didn't want my sisters to move in with us. I told my mom straight up to her face, no, I don't want them girls here. It's gonna be way too much on Jalen. He's already going through so much. I just had a baby. Like, no, absolutely not. Jalen begged me for my sisters to move in. He was like, this is gonna be good. They'll, they'll help us out and everything. It's gonna be great. I said, no, it will not. They're teenagers. They ain't gonna help with shit. It'll mm. be more on you. <laughs> yes, it was mm. just gonna be too much. And lo and behold, what happened? It was too much. Everything Jalen ever asked for, I gave to him. Everything. What was the breaking point for you guys to say, let's go on couples retreat? Our relationship was coming to an end and they just so happened to call us like around that time. Um, I didn't want to be with someone who kept calling me controlling every time I had some type of boundary. About you your know, money. My money and not only that, just going out all the time. And then I had just found out recently prior to us doing the show, he was cheating on me. And I mean, Ugh. only recently he just apologized to, for it. I mean, even now he won't even admit to the domestic violence via text message or anything. You know, he's very strategic, um, but he has apologized to me, you know, verbally for it. The breaking point was after the show. Um, I don't know why, but he just completely went into like a cocoon. He would not come out of this corner that he had in the house where he played video games. He would not come out of it. And there's nothing I, I could do. I tried everything to get him out of his funk, get him out of his depression. And your healing is very important, but it doesn't come before my pain. And he just kept hurting me and hurting me and hurting me. And so it just got to a point where, you know, I realized I deserve better, my daughter, deserves better because I don't want her to see, not that she'll ever have another dad, but I don't want her to see what it was, the type of person that her dad was being while in a relationship. I truly, even to this day, I don't hate him. I have forgiven him. I want him to be happy. I want him to go to therapy and to truly, you know, deep dive into what his issues are as we all have to, you know, um, it's a journey. He's young. He has time. Um, and I really do pray that he gets the help he needs. And, you know, I wish him the best of luck in life. What about your other kids? Were they around when you were going through this funk? Yep. They what all were, lived with me. And how, how old are they? Um, sons? 16, 15, and 10. So like the 16 and 15 year old, they can clearly see like. And see, and this is where you have to make the decision as a mom because boys are always gonna protect their mama. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And especially when they think that the mom is happy, they're gonna protect it even more. They're not gonna, if they see things or hear things, they're gonna pretend they didn't see or hear those things because they want mommy to be happy. So yeah, they will, I'm pretty sure they heard the domestic violence. I'm pretty sure they heard all of the arguments. But when I come out of that room, mommy knows how to wipe her tears and put a smile on her face. So I'm pretty sure they felt some type of pain, but they would never voice it, never. So what a mom has to do is use her own discernment. And that's exactly what I was doing. I had, I had to get to a point where I had to use my own discernment and be like, oh, my kids aren't stupid. It's time for me to go because I don't want them to see me like this. Yeah. 
Have you and Jalen spoke since the uh, the interview about uh, the things that he talked about during that interview? Yeah, I chewed his ass out for calling me a groomer. I'm like, what? What did I groom? What are you talking about? I said, do you even know what that means? And I literally sent him the definition of what it meant. And he was like, all right, well, it might have been the wrong term, but you did manipulate me. I'm like, how? Stop telling that story to everyone who will listen. Because if you want to, if you want me to pull out all the receipts and show all the facts, then you're going to, you're going to look really bad. And I'm trying to save you right now. Why won't you let me save you? But now you done came out here and made me out to be this person who didn't have your back. I held him down. So like, no, now, now it's to that point where fuck it. What's the difference between hmm. your guy now and your previous relationship with Jalen? Oh, he's a man. Drop my Well, okay. <laughs> and how did you come to the point where you can start dating again and looking for love again? Listen, y'all should know <laughs> by now, Fallon is a hopeless romantic. I love love. I'm not going to give up. I don't want to die alone. <laughs> I want to be with somebody. As I grow and as I heal, heal, healing is an everlasting thing and it never ends. You're always going to need healing. So, I mean, as long as I'm doing the work for myself and I'm also with somebody who's okay with that and who's also doing the work on themselves, then I can make it. Um, do you go to therapy yourself or? I do, yeah. Um, I am with someone that I feel like I can, ju I'm just free. I'm free. Shout out to that man. Yeah, he's a good You ain't gonna tell us his name? Nope. <laughs> And what are your hopes for you and Jalen in the future? I know you guys share a child. Like, what is your relationship like with your ch with your boy's father? Liam's father is non-existent. He always has been. Um, but Troy and Dylan's dads are very much so in their lives. They're they're good daddies. Um, they have them. They're with them right now. Um, I did realize at some point I have no business raising a black man on my own. I couldn't do it. I was trying my hardest, but I, I realized black men need their black fathers. There's just certain things a woman cannot teach a man. Mm -hmm. And when it got to that peak, I was like, all right, yeah, it's time for you to go with your daddy. Cause I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what to <laughs> so do So the two now. older boys are with their dad. They're with their dads. Okay. Yeah. And they, they help their, ch they help you financially with the boys and all that too. Um, there's never been, I used to pay child support um, back when. Wait, you were, used to pay child support? Yeah. Oh, you must have custody. Um, well, it was a whole custody battle and it went on for years and years. And while we were going back and forth, there always has to be a custodial parent. Yep. Um, there was a whole bunch of lies told while I wasn't around. Um, so it was just one of those things where it was like, all right, the judge gave my oldest son to the dad. But we're very, we're very close now. That's water. That's good. Bridge. Yeah. That's good. But you were paying but child now, support. Yeah, I was paying child support. I ain't never heard a woman paying child support. Yeah. Don't I kill. Have, don't I kill me on the internet. Twice, but not. It's not frequent. <laughs> it's not. It's, it's not really common. not. But listen, I'm going to take care of my kids. I don't care. Yeah. I don't, there's. I don't have any pride okay. when it comes to that. But now, neither one of us pay child support. None of us do. We all just pitch in. We all help. That's no, for none of your sons. No. Okay. Mm -mm. That's good. So Are you, you going to put Jalen on child support? Probably, because I don't see I don't see us Probably. being able to. Yes. Wait, does Jalen got a job? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Yes, he has a job. You are gonna put Jalen on child support? Uh, yeah, I probably am going to. Um, I just I don't see us being able to effectively co-parent. Well, damn. I don't I right don't now. See it. Not right now, because he's hurt right now, and hurt people hurt people. Mm. Okay. So I'm not hurt. I forgive him. I've I've moved on. I'm happy where I'm at. Um, I have my good days, I have my bad days, just like everybody else, but for the most part, I'm happy, and it makes him sick to his stomach to see me happy. So what does the what does your future look like for you? Well, I'm starting this new line. Um, it's gonna be, it's kinda, it's a little, it's humorous, it's meant to be humorous, but it's a little dark. It's, it's dedicated pretty much all about your exes, how they, you know, can be abusive, how they've, you know, targeted you, lied on you. And it's not just for women, it's for men too. It's unisex because men go through a domestic violence and abuse too. It's not just as women. Um, and so, yeah, so my line is targeted towards 
both men and women where um, it'll have catchy slogans on hoodies and shirts and things. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I was going to ask, what do you do for work? Like, how do you how did you have all this money to provide for yourself, your kids and Jalen? <laughs> well, it's crazy because when one door closes, another one opens. Um, the second I left Jalen, I mean, I, w I was getting a whole bunch of offers for modeling, which I didn't think I thought I was just old. You know, in the model world, I'm old. So or at least that's how it used to be, you know, so I got a lot of offers. I started working. Um, yeah, so I model right now full time. Oh, that's cool. Oh, wow, <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm the face of Fenty right now, Savage Fenty. Shout out to y'all. Hey. Uh, yeah, so it's it's been really cool. The, all the comments and the whole everything on the media, does that ever bother you? Oh, all the time. It does? Do you read them? Do you, do I, you go I learned not to read them anymore, but sometimes you just can't help it. I haven't opened up my social media in the past four or five days because ever since I posted the groomer shirt, you know, I knew I knew people were gonna get it that mm -hmm. it was a clapback um, because it was a total lie. Uh, but I also knew that people were gonna think that I actually was and that I was narcissistic. Mm -hmm. You know, all these things. Yeah. So I was kind of prepped for that. However, I'm tired of being silent. Like so I'm what do you want to say? What do you want to say to everybody that's like all the crazy stuff that they saying about you on the Internet? What do you want to say to all these comments? I'm not a groomer. Um, I did not. I did not go after Jalen. He came after me. Um, he courted me. Um, I had no ill will towards Jalen. I wanted to be with him. I truly did. Um, it just didn't work out and that's okay. Not out here trying to be salty or spread any dirt on his name at all because he is the father of my daughter. And um, regardless of anything that has happened, I just wish him the best of luck and love and light. And I truly do hope that he gets the help that he needs. Um, and I'm always gonna be here for him, no matter what. I, I, truly, I truly just want him to understand that I, never meant to be manipulative. I just had boundaries. I mean, I, I think that's pretty normal in relationships, right? Or at least it should be, um, but it's okay. If that's what he thinks of me, that's fine. Um, but I really did have the best intentions. Uh, I'm not a cheater. Have I cheated in the past? Sure, you started it, but <laughs> nah, I'm not a cheater. Um, and do you feel any way towards Portia at all? <laughs> uh, mm. I think not necessarily Simon wasn't my husband to begin with because she was able to take him so no not really but when I see her face it just puts a really bad taste in my mouth You're and it's to very take. triggering mm. Yeah, I'm not completely over that situation just yet. Yeah, I, I work on it every day, but. But when they're all over TV, you know, they got the show and all that, you know, it's kind of hard not to see them. Yeah, I didn't really see it that much. I think anything I saw, you know, people just tagged me. I was laughing, you know, but I, I didn't watch it or anything like that. I just, even for Simon, I've, I've forgiven him and I truly do want him to be happy. But I don't have any words for Portia. That's what just, would you tell some people about fame? Everybody always thinks that they want riches and fame until they have it. And if you could take all the fame and the TV and everything away, would you not ever done Housewives? Yeah, I would have never done Housewives to begin with. Um, they, they ruined my life. I'm not saying that I didn't have any parts in it because I could have tried to make it work. I just wasn't going to anymore. But yeah. I mean, they came in my home and it just, it all, it all went, it all went to hell after that. Would you do any more reality TV? <laughs> I've said this a thousand times, no. And then I went and did couples retreat. So I can't say. <laughs> it if depends. you had your own show. Yeah, I would do my own show. Absolutely. 100%. Mm -hmm. um, couples retreat was a really good one to go on because they weren't out here trying to make up stories and try to lie on anybody or switch anybody's narratives around. They really told our story the way it was and how we felt at that time. So there was nothing, there wasn't a beat missed. So um, as long as there's a network like that, 
that, you know, has morals and actually tells the truth, then yeah, I, I would do it. Well, Fallon, we appreciate you for stopping mm -hmm. by. Anything else you want to get off your chest? Um, You know, well, fuck all these. No, just kidding. <laughs> 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 no, um, just continue to spread love and light no matter what it is that people may say, no matter what they do. Um, you always have the floor. You always are able to choose how it is that you respond. And I'm going to continue to choose to respond in love and light um, with a little bit of kickback. <laughs> but but um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to my next chapter. Fallon Pina, I think that was the pep talk right there. Yeah, that, that was, was, that was fast, definitely fast, the fast, pep fast, talk. Fast. We gotta snap that up, we gotta snap that up. Yeah. Yeah.